Hello, good evening. Well, well it's afternoon actually for me, but it will be the evening for you when you're watching this. Uh, first of all, I have an apology to make. In the teaser video, I did tell you that I was going to do something with this string and with my mannequin friend. Um, unfortunately, due to the, the beauty of spring absolutely hammering me with hay fever all week, I've not been able to do this. Um, what I was going to do was make the diameter pa parameter. I didn't do maths. The parameter of the prison cell in my bedroom to show you the the, 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 the scale of the prison cell. I was going to use the mannequin to show how ineffective it is to social distance within a prison cell. Um, I can tell you the measurements of the prison cell. That would be officially 8 foot by 12 foot. That's on a new build, prisons. <clears throat> but the reality is, is usually eight foot by six foot, and that includes a bed, a desk, and two people. Impossible to social distance. I, I can't do my conversion from feet to the metric system, but it's very, very small. Uh, if you are interested in seeing the primaries, primaries of a prison cell. I did make a video a few weeks back that is on my YouTube. It does contain swearing just in advance, but that will give you an idea of the scale of the size of a prison cell. So, after that apology, we'll now move on to the main bit of the video, which is me giving you some facts about prisons and the current situation, which will then lead on to the debate. So, first of all, we'll start with the number of prisoners in the UK. So when we say the UK prison system, we mean England and Wales, because Scotland and Northern Ireland have a slightly different system. So the number, in, uh, the number of prisoners, male and female, in England and Wales is approximately 86,000 people. That is about 79,000 male and 7,000 female. <coughs> and in addition to that, uh, England and Wales has the highest proportion of aged prisoners in Europe, possibly worldwide, uh, making the, the population particularly vulnerable to COVID. Pre-COVID, the conditions of prisons were atrocious. They are understaffed, they are overcrowded, and they are completely unhygienic. A large number of these buildings were built 150, 200 years ago, HMP Leeds being a prime example, that is a castle on the hill you can see on the south side, built deliberately to be imposing. The last uh, renovations of that building were in the early 90s, but the bulk of the prison is about 200 years old, small conditions, unhygienic conditions, not good, impossible social distance. Uh, there are approximately two guards on each wing of about 100 prisoners. That's dangerous in and of itself. Introduce COVID into the situation where a member of staff may get sick, where a prisoner may get sick. How is it possible to keep these people safe within the prison system? The government has brought in <clears throat> a few methods, uh, as we do which is to stop all prison visits. So now prisoners no longer will be visited by their loved ones or friends. That has a huge emotional impact on them. The prison is providing hand washing facilities, which, I mean, they should really do anyway. Um, from my personal experience of prison 10 years ago, we got a bar of soap a week unless you had money to buy soap, so prisons are very unhygienic. Anyway, hand washing facilities, I do understand. It, it, it's basically doing nothing, man. Uh, the, the Ministry of Justice did do a risk assessment uh, and they decided that anyone with a low risk who is in within the, the last two months of release, they will be released early temporarily. So they will be going back to prison after this is over. Uh, 
that led to the release of approximately 7,000 prisoners out of that 86. Basically, not touching the surface, we've still got 79,000 people in prison. Uh, also, within the prison, all recreational activities have been stopped. This means prisoners can no longer access the gym, they can no longer go to uh, worship, they can no longer go to the library. This is the conditions for people in the prison currently. The other side is the people who we are sending to prison now, from the outside world, from here, where we're being told to self-isolate, we're being told to imprison ourselves in our home, and we're being made to, scared, uh, made to be scared of killing someone by going to the shop. Now, someone goes to a shop and steals a packet of biscuits. It's their tenth offence. They're, they're a repeat offender. So they are going to get sent to prison this time. That then, in my eyes, effectively is the government potentially sending someone, sentencing someone to death for a crime which does not warrant death. We do not have a death sentence in this country. If our government knows the dangers of COVID, it knows the dangers of COVID outside in the open wide world, then surely it knows the problems and conditions for within the prison system. But it's still sending people there. And prisons, prisons exist behind, by the very nature, behind closed doors. Uh, Unless you have been into a prison, unless you work in a prison, unless you work with organisations that work with prisons, you tend not to have an understanding of what happens in there. And I'm going to give you a trigger warning here, so just pause if you don't like this. Okay? From my experience, in prison I have seen people cut their stomachs open and rub excrement within those wounds. I've seen people slash their wrists, wrists in the most disgusting, horrific ways. I've seen people with wounds all over the bodies. I've seen people with infected, gangrenous sores from injecting needles into themselves. This is a highly vulnerable population. Probably the most vulnerable people of society tend to be the people that end up in prisons. They have low immune systems, a large part in due, due to uh, drug use and such and also the unhygienic conditions of the prisons as I have previously stated. So please, with all that in mind, that leads me to my point. My argument here is that all, not just 7,000 people, all non-violent or short-term sentence all low-risk prisoners should be released from prison and kept on a home detention curfew. That's a little tag which goes on your ankle, and if you leave your house, you return to prison. Since the government advice is currently, as it stands, to stay at home, I, I don't see how that's any different. We could put a tag on the ankle of someone who, that will then force them to stay at home. There is no need for them to go to prison. Pre-COVID, there was discussions of stopping uh, prison sentences below six months due to the, the fact that they don't actually work and prisons don't work. Uh, unfortunately, when the new government came in and the uh, Justice Secretary resigned and we were given a new Justice Secretary who is possibly one of the worst people for the job, in my humble opinion, um, that's been thrown out of the window completely. I believe if that argument was put forward pre-COVID and was being seriously considered by a conservative government no less, then it should definitely be considered now. And I will I take any death within a prison of COVID as the government effectively killing that person, sentencing them to death knowingly for a crime which does not warrant death and that completely goes against our entire justice system and I don't know what else to say. This is the video over. We'll now move on to the debate bit. 
ask me any questions you would like I will try to answer if you don't if you disagree with me that's fine my opinion is we should release all low-risk non-violent prisoners on home detention curfew to stop the spread of COVID in prisons because in a few months I believe it will be absolutely devastating when we see the numbers of what has happened in there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in a minute in the actual evening. Goodbye.